So I be good at it. Hello, everyone. It's me, Sharp Chris Potato. Hope you're having a lovely day. As you can see, we are playing a bit of an old school game now. This is taking it back to the uh, the early 90s, I believe. And, uh, well, sorry, the late 90s. With Road Rash. This was Road Rash for the PlayStation 1. I'm going to be playing a little bit of this. I've already done a little bit, uh, a few races, or until like stage two, where the races start getting a little bit more difficult. So, um, yeah, without further ado, I'm just going to hop straight into this game. This game holds a lot of nostalgia for me. Uh, we're going to go to the city, and we're just going to play. We are just going to hop right in and play. So, this takes me back to when I was a kid. I used to love this game. Just hopping down, going for a cheeky ride on the old motorcycle that's my character right there just um yeah i haven't bought any new bikes yet or anything i'm just saving up the the cash as it comes in and um yeah we'll go for it oh that's uh that's loud here we go oh there we go i had to remember the controls there oh look at this game i don't know there's just something about it it's nostalgic it's uh those, those good old sprite animations, you know, and the, the the hardest thing about this game was the draw distance and the way that the the road just so, sort of appears, like you know, as you go along, because it's all about reaction time essentially. This game and a little bit of luck, uh, luck and reaction time, and if you don't have either, you'll be busted. You got to get rid of these policemen because uh, they will cause you nothing but trouble. And if you fall off where there's a policeman nearby, um, they will bust you and you will be busted and you lose some money and you have to start again. So, um, yeah, what to say about this game? Um, I used to, I remember first getting it, uh, my dad came back from like uh, E3, the convention, when it was a convention, not a digital sort of thing and this was when all companies were invited and where it wasn't just gaming it was like software industries as well because my dad worked for a software company like doing like very kind of small games back back then they were like you know they were sold on cds and stuff but nowadays they'd be like freebies that you pick up online essentially like that but uh that's how the times have changed and he bought back this it was called like the charity collection and it was three games in one. It was um, Broken Sword. I remember that. I love Broken Sword as well. Um, Road Rash. And I think the third one was Mist. But I never got into Mist. It was like a kind of point and click adventure kind of game. But very boring and slow. Uh, I, I just never got into that. But um, yeah, Road Rash I definitely got into. And um, yeah. This is, whoa, this is going to be a ramble video, so I'm just going to be rambling and ranting on and uh, just telling you about my nostalgia, basically, for this game. It's such a, it's a simple game, but it's like, it's just satisfying, you know? It's like there's, there's nothing to it. The buttons are so simple. It's like X is go, you know, you've got your steering, you can kick, you can punch, that's pretty much it. And it's perfect. It's, it's just sometimes you need a game like this to just hop into and it's like mindless fun and satisfying. Oh look, that guy got wasted. I'm in number one spot now. I need to keep this. Um, and yeah, essentially, um, I used... Oh my gosh. Oh. oh, can you not? Can you not? He needs to get out of here. That was that was dangerous. We lost a few positions. Oh my! Oh, that cheeky bugger. Okay. Um. So yeah. Um. I, I used to play this game uh, split screen actually with uh, my mum was a childminder, so she looked after a lot of kids, and uh, we, used, we used to sort of take it in turns, like playing this together, sort of thing. And um. And then yeah, I really got into this game. And um, 
I remember I actually I played the sequel. Uh, I think it was just called Road Rash 3D. But to be honest, I always came back to this one. I don't know why. It's just there's something about this that just tickles me. It's like, oh my god, oh my god, no, oh. oh my god, oh my god. That was that was bad. Look at that stupid car. Okay, I think we're gonna not finish in the top three here, sadly. But um, yeah, Road Rash 3D was good. Uh, you know, graphics were a big improvement. They weren't sprites. It was actually well, 3D. But um, the thing. Oh, oh, sorry, a bit of a lag going on that. Uh, the thing was, I don't know. I just kind of. I, I prefer the sprite graphics and the sounds and everything about this game. It's just... Oh, that was a good kick, that was. See, that was just satisfying. Oh, God. Oh, God, oh, God, oh, God. Um, and look how, how insane it gets, like, through these little... You know, the road is like... Oh, you got to cut through the cars and everything. It's just so satisfying. Um, and then there was another one. Oh, come on, if I can kick him... Oh, it's alright, you crashed there. Um, there was another one that came out afterwards. Uh, I got that one for Christmas. That one was called, I think... Oh, oh no, he's done me. It was called Road Rash Jailbreak. That one was a really good game as well, to be fair. Um, although, with that said, with like modern standards, that would have been more of like a DLC kind of game nowadays. Because... It was essentially Road Rash 3D, but reskinned, like lots of new skins and stuff. Oh look, we fell off right at the last minute. That was that was bad, but um, yeah, it was it was essentially that game reskinned, new bikes, new courses and stuff. Um, but it was it was a good uh, good game. I, I played a lot of that as well. But um, yeah, we were a loser. We only got five four hundred quid. That's that's not good. We need to do that one again. Let's, uh, let's do that one again. You need to qualify for it. Essentially, you need to get a top three position in each one so you qualify and then you can move on to the next stages. Um, but yeah, and uh, I remember I used to actually uh, play this with my mum as well. Like, because uh, it got to a stage where after all the kids went home, like from when my mum was childminding, she used to like ask like oh like you know what what do you want me to watch you play sort of thing you know just to sort of spend time with me because she was busy all day with like looking after the kids so that was like sort of our time to you know socialize spend time together and stuff and uh i remember i just used to it started off first where i'd uh, be forcing her to oh my god this guy watching her play uh, sorry um forcing her to watch me play sonic uh, this was for the like the Sega Mega Drive Master System, those you know, classic Sonic sort of thing. And um, she she admitted like when I first you know started telling her to watch me play these games, she was like, oh okay, you know. She never said that. She was like always happy to at least pretend that she was enjoying it. But uh, yeah, she admitted she wasn't a fan of at the beginning. But over time, she actually got into it. And um, the funny thing is. But, oh, come on. I can do him. Oh, no. That's what you get for trying to be cheeky. And now I'm going to get busted by the police. Yeah. See? The police have busted me. Brick. Um, I need to try again. We just lost money now. Um, but over time, you know, when the game started getting a bit more exciting to watch, uh, then she enjoyed that. Like, uh, the big ones were Age of Empires. She used to like watching that. Um especially when I played online against other people. That was like, you know, when MSN Gaming Zone came around and you could play online, that was that was special, that was. Um, what else? Uh, but we used to play this split screen because it was like you could do the campaign together, uh, co-op and just kind of, you know, race together sort of thing. It was, uh, it was pretty cool. So, yeah. Um, and the other big game that also holds like a really special place, probably my top game of all time, I'd say, is uh, even to this day, like if if I had like one game I could keep and play like forever, it would probably be. Oh, my God, this this is that same geezer again. 
Um, it was Twisted Metal 2 World Tour, it was called. And it was... Let's screw this guy up. There we go. Oh my god. Yes, take that, you evil bugger. Um, it was Twisted Metal 2 World Tour, and... Oh man, I remember this game so well. It was... I, I played it so much. I think it was definitely my most played PlayStation title uh, back in the day. And uh, it, it's such a good game. It's so cheesy, like the stories and the, the, the actual voice acting and everything in the cutscenes was like super cheesy, but the gameplay itself was so much fun. And um, yeah, I remember like the best thing about that game, it was like, oh, it felt like Christmas, right? When, when I was younger, you had two options for getting games. It wasn't digital, there was no digital. It was all CDs and stuff. And I remember... Did we get him? No. Oh. oh my god, he's still going. Um, and I remember, basically, you could either go to Game or HMB or wherever you wanted to get your games from. Or the, the other option was you could get these like monthly magazines that came through to you just i think you subscribe to them but i think they were free to subscribe to like you didn't have to pay any thing it was just like a, a kind of a cheap little paper magazine that came through but the thing is it was lit oh my god i've just been busted again haven't i please come on get back to your no no come on oh go 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 oh come on you're on your bike dude you could have gone i am freaking dreadful um so yeah, and the best thing about this is it was literally like a, a magazine, like database, with just games, like nothing else, just games listed, like uh, in text, like thousands, not thousands, there wasn't thousands, but essentially like, I'd say maybe 100 games per page or something like that. And uh, they had little symbols next to them. The, the pink triangle meant that it was like a new, a uh, new release, new game that was like, you know, very popular and you, you should definitely get this one. It was like recommended new games. And then you had the black, which was like discounted games. And um, yeah, I remember I saw Twisted Metal on there. And uh, the reason I wanted it so much is because I remember uh, my dad and me went to Blockbuster, which is where you could rent movies and games. And we rented Twisted Metal 1 for the weekend. And uh, I remember playing it with my mum and just uh, as I think you could do, you could only do head to head though. There was no co-op in that, which was, it was still fun. Like, you know, just used to play against my mum. Obviously I'd go easy on her sort of thing. But um, yeah, over time she did get better though. And I didn't have to, you know, uh, let her win so much. But um, yeah, essentially Twisted Metal 2 you could do co-op, which was freaking amazing. So you could like work together. I love co-op games. Uh, versus games, I never, I didn't really ever like versus games. I don't mind it versus the computer, but versus other players, I just, I don't like, uh, I guess it's like confrontation. I just don't like it sort of thing. I don't like being against someone. I prefer working with someone sort of thing. So I uh, never got into Twisted Metal 1 so much because of that. However, Twisted Metal 2, yeah, we ordered that game and I remember it was a Sunday morning and the, the best thing was like, you know, it usually took a week for the game to arrive back then. It wasn't like Amazon Prime where you get it next day. It was like a week you had to wait for the game to be delivered by the postman. And uh, so what you do when, when a week had passed, you'd be like, as a kid, you'd just be waiting at that like letterbox, just hoping that you know, in the morning, like, you'll hear that letterbox go. And I remember, like, I was in bed, and it was, like, 8.30 or something. And I just heard the letterbox go. And I was like, oh, my God, could it be? And it sounded like a hefty thing, because you could hear something chunky hit the floor. And it, they, they had this, like, perfectly sized cardboard box. And then inside, you had the jewel case with the, the CD inside. And freaking amazing. So I ran downstairs and yeah, I just saw this little brown box. I was like, oh, come on, this has to be. And opening that up, getting that fresh smell of like a brand new game, you know, a brand new CD case and just opening that dual case and smelling that sort of new game. 
it had like this specific like new smell to it it was so good and uh yeah there it was twisted metal 2 with axle on the front and uh yeah from that minute i just ran upstairs you know like you know as a kid when you run upstairs and you're on like all fours like you run upstairs like a freaking monster or that girl from the thing or something like that you're just like like a maniac basically just running upstairs with that like gripped in my fist but making sure not to slam it against the stairs just carefully running up like crazy um you know whacking open that playstation one essentially getting whatever disc was in there and throwing it on my bed like a frisbee and then just like you know and then just putting crystal metal 2 in and it had the best disc as well it was like sweet tooth space like bright red sweet tooth um with like a black background it was such a nice cd um and yeah i just remember like loading that in and then straight away when it loads up after the good old playstation intro you just hear sweet tooth's crazy <laughs> laugh and that that was it from that moment i knew this was a good game for me this was this was going to be the one and it was played that game so freaking much mastered every every car every vehicle like i funnily enough even today right to this day uh when i go back to the uk my mom has the playstation one set up because she still child minds some uh, some kids and um they play the old playstation one still even though they're like gen gen x or gen z or whatever you want to call them now um they still play the old playstation one games and uh they play twisted metal 2 and i remember i launched it up when i went back to visit my parents and uh yeah and i knew i automatically like muscle memory i remembered all the freaking buttons like all the there was like these combos like up up right was shield up up left was jump and then there was like you hold down R2, up, down, up, up, and that was like minion special attack that you could do from any vehicle. And up, down, up was a mine. I, I just knew them all, and they all came back to me naturally as I picked up that PlayStation controller and I just got in that game. And that's a sign that that is a game that you truly love when you remember those sort of, you know, those that muscle memory comes back straight away and you remember these things. Look at that, that's place, easy. Um, so, yeah love that game but i'd say like playstation one for me my top games that i played were definitely road rash twisted metal 2 tekken 2 was my favorite tekken um what else uh, i played a lot of crash bandicoot like all of the crash bandicoots but i think everyone played crash bandicoot back then um okay we qualify for that do sierra nevada um what else was there i played a lot of um abe i played a lot of abe's odyssey mm. international superstar soccer pro that was a good one that was like a that was for the people who weren't very good at fifa they they had international superstar soccer pro instead and it was so funny because you could really cheese that game because it was like it wasn't like um I don't know how to explain it. There's a, there's probably a word for it, but you know, like on the controller, like if you, it was like diagonal movement, I think is the best way I can explain it. Explain it. So it's, oh, oh my God. That little bugger. Um, okay, yeah, but there was diagonal movement in that game. So you couldn't free move. There was no like between like, diagonal and up it was like you either go up diagonal left left diagonal down uh, left and down and stuff you know so essentially like how how many directions would it be four uh like eight eight way diagonal sort of movement sort of thing and the great thing with this movement in that game is that over time over a lot of time playing you would begin to notice the patterns that the computer players take and you could always beat them by using certain certain like diagonal movements so if they were coming at you from straight you quickly went backwards and then did diagonal uh, up and left or up and right and you'd always get around them and there was one way that you could always get to the corner flag and take on the center back defenders 
Um, oh, sorry, like the, the winger defenders. And uh, you could always cross the ball in and you could always score from a header no matter what. And it, you know, it was funny because those games ended up being like, uh, like freaking, will this guy go down? Uh, the, the scores would always be like, you know, 24 nil and stuff like that. It was so funny. Um, but yeah. Um, so yeah, I think they were like my main games that I played. There's probably more to be fair. I played a lot of games. Like, um, uh, I liked all genres of games back then as well, because I liked, um, Broken Sword as well. Like I said, that was a point and click adventure about this like American tourist in France. And there was like a suicide bomb, not, not suicide bomb, but a bomb like, you know, went off in Paris in this little cafe and that's how it all starts. And oh, that was a good game, actually. That was a good story interesting um and then after that uh after the playstation one i got more into uh the pc i started playing like wolfenstein 3d doom uh loads of like duke nukem these kind of games stuff like that um age of empires age of empires 2 and then moved on to the playstation 2 as well and that's when uh on the playstation 2 definitely top game would have been time splitters probably Two, I think one was amazing one was definitely you know that got me into that genre but two was by far the superior game um, but yeah essentially I could go on forever about what games I played but uh, yeah as we're playing Road Rash now it's just such a, a simple game but um, I, I was going to show you the sequel that sort of came out because in I think it was like 2000 like 17 like near the end of uh to like coming up to like 2020 maybe there was um uh there was like a an unofficial sequel because i think essentially after road rash 3d and jailbreak that company i think they must have dissolved or something because uh they never brought out another road rash after that and then over oh god over time there was um a game that came out that was kickstarted so it was like for people who liked road rash and wanted a road rash game but um you know essentially they needed to fund these developers to make it so their game was called road redemption i've got it on the pc i only played like an hour of it or so because i don't know i think a lot of it was nostalgia but um, at the same time, the game was just, they, they made it like slightly too complex. There was too much to it because Road Rash is all about literally just racing, concentrating on the track, avoiding all the random crap and essentially using two buttons, kick and punch. And that's it. And that's what Road Rash should be. But they added things like guns where you could aim with like crosshairs and stuff. That wasn't a good result. We might need to buy a better bike, to be honest. Um, yeah, they, they just, they added too much and they added it. So, cause in this game, like when you push punch or kick, it will automatically, um, go from left to right, depending on who's there. So you don't, you don't have to worry about kick, like pushing a button to kick left and a button to kick right. It's one button. It will just automatically go left and right. Uh, but they added like directional kicking and buttons. Uh, they added like blocking and parrying as well. So. The thing is, the combat in that game, it's too much that it took your focus off the actual driving, that you would be literally just focused on the fighting and you wouldn't be watching the road at all because you'd have to be parrying attacks and, like, you know, attacking when they're not attacking and stuff like that. So, um, yeah, I never got into it. It was just, it wasn't, it was Road Rash, but it wasn't Road Rash. They just, they, they added too much. And they added like a talent tree, which I did like. That was a cool idea. So it's like over time, you could increase your health and your attack damage and stuff like that. And you could essentially make your biker more powerful as, as time goes on. Um, but at the same time, again, I do just prefer the idea of, you know, earning, racing, earning money, buying new bikes sort of thing. That was... That was fine. You've got to be careful with these buggers. There we go. Um, 
Yeah, I really think we need to buy a new bike because this one's sort of trailing, trailing behind the pack now a bit. Um, but yeah, it, it was, you know, I appreciate it. I'm glad I invested in it because, you know, essentially it, it was kind of like a wake up call to a lot of developers, I think, that even though the game is super dated and stuff, people essentially want a game like that. They, they want a nostalgic game. And this actually brought on a lot of indie developers to start developing games like this. You had like a, ooh, you had a Carmageddon remake as well. Um, Carmageddon was a game I played the hell out of as well. And that's where I developed my love for rock music as well through the soundtrack, which was uh, Iron Maiden. So yeah, Carmageddon was a hell of a game actually. I'd say Carmageddon and Twisted Metal were my two favorite games growing up. Uh, Carmageddon, my favorite PC game, along with Age of Empires. That, that would be a close one, to be fair. Um, what else? Oh, man. Um, yeah, Age of Empires. What else? Uh, you know, Wolfenstein and Doom. I think for every 90s, you know, kid who grew up in the 90s played that like to some extent there we go um yeah i don't think we're going to be able to win these races we need a faster bike um playstation 2 was time splitters 100 percent. i don't think ssx was good i enjoyed i played a lot of ssx but um yeah i think in PS2 games? There wasn't really a PS2 game that stood out to me like an, an amazing one. I think all the games that stood out to me like the most were from the PlayStation 1 era. Even Grand Theft Auto on the PlayStation 1. That stood out for me a lot. Uh, I got GTA 2 for the PC. They played a lot of that as well. Roller Coaster Tycoon. Love that game. Um... Played a lot, you know. Obviously, Counter Strike 1.6. Although I think I started when it was like 1.2 back in the day. That was uh, yeah, that was funny. Back, uh, I remember getting it. It was like I, I I got it when it was like a mod in a, a PC magazine. It was actually on a demo CD, and it was like a mod of uh, Half Life that someone had made. It was just called Counter Strike, and it wasn't an official game. It was like Counter-Strike 1.0 and there was like a little training tutorial. There was like, oh man, it, and I think I think there was bots you could play against, but that was it. And there was like two, there was Aztec and Dust and that was it. Um, and hardly anyone was playing it back then. And then once 1.1 came around and Steam first got introduced, then it picked up traction. Um, yeah. Other games, other games, I'm just trying to think. Oh, we need a new bike. After this, we'll have a look and we'll invest in the, the most expensive bike we can afford, essentially. Um, yeah, I was thinking of other games I could maybe play, like do a nostalgia trip on some games. Uh, I wouldn't mind playing uh, something like Ridge Racer. Like, I think I can't remember what it was called. Ridge Racer Revolution, I think. That was like one of the first games I got. That was a good one. Uh, I'd really like to play Crash Team Racing. I don't know if that's on the PlayStation 5. That if you can buy it from the PlayStation Store, maybe. Okay, we've got 6,000. Let's see what we can buy. Probably a rat bike. I don't think we'll be able to afford a sports bike. How much are these? 9,000, 16, 13, nah. Oh, 6,994. If we did a few more races, we could get that. Because essentially we just need to, yeah, let's do that. Let's do a couple more races and just get a bit more cash. And then we'll be able to afford that bike as long as we don't get busted and go backwards. Um, yeah, what else? Mm. Alone in the J Dark, Jack is back. That was a good game. That was um, that was a really scary game. That scared the hell out of me, actually. I never played Resident Evil. I remember I bought it from Blockbuster, and I was a real puss of a child. I hated horror games. 
and movies. Really got freaked out by them. And I never played Resident Evil. I remember I bought Resident Evil 2 from Blockbuster. Uh, rented it, sorry. Loaded it up. Couldn't figure out how to even kill the first zombie because, you know, in that game it was like you had to hold multiple buttons, I think, to shoot. It wasn't just shoot and stuff. It, was, it wasn't a point and click shoot. It was like you had to actually use the menu system and stuff like that. So I never got into it. And, uh, yeah, I, I sort of regret that because... I missed out on so many good games like Silent Hill, uh, Resident Evil franchise in general, like other other stuff as well. So yeah, that is one thing that I do regret. Um, yeah, I'd like to go back and play these. Um, one game I did like a lot that I played again with my mum was Street Racer. It was it was kind of like a a karting game as well. I used to love karting games actually. There was. Um, there was another one we played. There was, you know, there was Micro Machines V3, Supersonic Racers. There was Street Racer. And there was one other that began with W, I think. I think it was like, it wasn't Wacky Racers. It was, gosh, I can't remember the name of it. But it was, uh... oh man, that's going to drive me mental. But yeah, I used to love these kind of like cartoony, like, you know, race games i guess looking at my history i just like games with racing and combat a lot like this road rash you race and you fight carmageddon racing fighting gta is you know there's a bit of racing and fighting in that as well um what else uh you know street racer all these like other other games like that um gosh yeah um, we get him? Oh man, he's still going. Get out of here. Must have got him then. Um, yeah. But uh, I, I wish they. Oh, terrible. See, this is what I mean. There was no way to see that car until it was too late there. Um, but yeah, uh, I, I wish they would remaster some of these games. Uh, I would love to play. Road Rash, just same game, but just remastered, like just nicer graphics, maybe, or even have it like uh, Diablo 2 Resurrected, where you can switch between the new engine graphics and the old engine, you know, especially now with AI, they could ease AI could easily upscale a game like this and make it uh, make it like more sort of modern and stuff. Um, like increase the draw distance would be nice but then that might take away some of the fun as well you got to be careful with remasters not to you know change it too much that you actually ruin the actual gameplay sort of thing um well what else uh streets of rage that's a good example of a classic game that they remastered really well because uh streets of rage 4 they did such a nice job with that game um you know uh, I used to play Streets of Rage on the place, uh, sorry, Sega with, uh, again, with my mum most of the time. And, um, yeah, I remember that, um, when they bought Streets of Rage 4 out, my first instinct was, gosh, can I somehow play this with my mum? But she doesn't have a PC, sadly, and, uh, or a modern console. She's only got the old school console, so, yeah, sadly couldn't, couldn't play that with her. But, uh, I'd like to, that'd be cool. Maybe one day if she gets like a Xbox or PC or PlayStation uh, 5, whatever, then get out of here. Oh, so annoying. Oh, can you go away? Come on. Get out of here. There we go. Um... Yeah, Streets of Rage 4, they did an amazing job with that. Oh, nice. I like stealing their weapons. Yeah, yeah. Um, oh, Twisted Metal. Uh, speaking of Twisted Metal, they Twisted Metal 2 I really got into. But I never played Twisted Metal... I, I think it was like 3, 4 and 5. Because they were actually, I think, American releases only. 
Um, and they were, I could never find them in Europe anywhere. Uh, Twisted Metal Black you could get uh, for the PlayStation 2. That was a good game with an amazing soundtrack. Uh, very difficult, though. Did I get any money? 260. Uh, it's not a lot, but it'll do. A few more. Maybe another top top six and we might be able to get that um what else uh ba, ba, ba. yeah and then there was a twisted metal remake for the playstation 3 that i also played it was just called twisted metal that was really weird that one it was it was a good game i enjoyed it but it just again it wasn't twisted metal and there's there's something about these old playstation 1 games that I don't know if it is just me and it is nostalgia and I, I come back and I just I just love these old school games like this. But um, with Twisted Metal, there's just something about Twisted Metal 2 that feels perfect. They got the right balance of like, oh man, they got the, the perfect balance of like difficulty. Um, vehicle control in that was super uh, addictive as well because it, it was clunky. It was clunky in a way that you could master it, you know? Whereas modern games, like any driving game, they they always have like these really, uh, like the, the combat shooter games, I mean. They often have the, or at least on PlayStation 3, they always had these like really kind of clunky, fast paced controls that, you know, the game, the racing and everything was just too fast paced and uh, it was too fast paced and it, it just didn't feel right. Whereas Twisted Metal 2, it was quite slow, but the the controls itself were like really nice that you could master them and you could go fast in that game as well with the turbos and stuff. Um, but yeah, I never got into it because just because of the controls on it and the, the aggressiveness of the other enemies as well. It's like they would always come for you. It's like they, they pretty much ignored each other and all came for you. And in Twisted Metal 2, they they kind of did that, but they didn't. They did fight amongst themselves, but um, they would still come for you, but not as aggressively sort of thing. So, yeah, you can understand, like, the... Oh, that was close. I almost went straight down the middle there. Um, so, yeah, never got into that. Um, SSX, they did a good job at remastering that because they had SSX, then SSX Tricky, and then it went on a huge gap for ages. And then I think they bought one out for the PlayStation 3 that was just called SSX again. And this one was really good. And it had a really nice soundtrack. Uh, same characters, a few new ones, uh, but really nice game overall. Um, I think other games and stuff but uh listen to that bike look how fast they are they're too fast Whoa. um games are good what other games were good uh, I think, yeah, after that, I sort of, you know, went fully PC gaming when, when sort of, once I got into Counter-Strike and Team Fortress Classic, I just went full PC gaming and then started playing games like uh, Diablo 2, uh, played World of Warcraft, got very addicted to that, that took over my teenage life, um, Guild Wars, played a lot of that. Um, and yeah, I think other than that, after that, I sort of, uh, oh man, what have we done? What have we, look, the finish line is right there and I'm in third. No, that wasn't the finish line, but still, how do I get back on the track? Can I get back on the track? Oh man, how do I do this? isn't good oh here we go um we have just ruined it we would have had enough money there to actually win that um i can't remember what i was saying 
What was this saying? Oh man. Uh, gosh, I can't remember what I was saying. I've gone completely blank. I have totally forgot what I was saying. Oh yeah, what I was playing. And then after that, that is when I sort of then, after World of Warcraft, uh, you know, after that, oh, you joker, I sort of started dabbling back into other genres of games again, because honestly, I kind of, I love World of Warcraft for what it did for me, because it got me a job at Blizzard back in the day, and it essentially was an amazing game, and I met so many cool people for it and everything, uh, made some, like, awesome friends and stuff, but just because of how addicted I was to it I neglected so many different games that I would have loved back then uh, because I was just too addicted to World of Warcraft and that's the only downside and now I, I find myself going back and playing these old games that I missed during that time and really loving them as well so yeah 140 that's terrible that won't get us anything how much did we need? We needed like 100 and no, nine, 6,900. So we can do it. We can do it. We're going in until we get a new bike. And I'll end the video. So until then, I'm just going to keep rambling on. Um, but yeah, let me know if you want me to maybe every now and then stream one of these old games and just relive it, you know? Like if you've got a PlayStation 1 game that you want me to play, uh, just give me the name. I'll load it up and we can have a, a good old rough and tumble with that, you know? Um, yeah, there's some other games that I would have liked to get into. One of them that I did get into that I'm glad I did is Devil May Cry. That was a good series. I played up until Devil May Cry 3, I think. But then I sort of, I don't know, I felt it was going a bit too far with the whole thing oh that's lucky um yeah so devil may cry one was amazing two was okay three was amazing but then four i never got into i did play the remark or the rebranded one it was again just called devil may cry and i, I like that a lot that was cool never finished that actually i should probably go back and play that again at some stage that was good um, but yeah, the one game I am looking forward to is Age of Mythology because they're remaking that and uh, that was a game I played a lot of, uh, both online and offline. Played the campaign, liked it a lot. Um, played multiplayer, really liked that. Um, the, the trouble is that there was a new Age of Empires recently, Age of Empires 4, was it? 4, I want to say 4 or 5. I think it's four. Um, and I just, I couldn't get into it. Or was it five? It might be five, you know. I can't remember. No, four. It was, no, I don't know. It's got to be four, because three was the last one. There was no four. It, it's four. Yeah, Adrian plus four. And it's good, but nah, it's, it's not... It's not Age of Empires, you know. Age of Empires had this, like, distinct graphic and feel to it again. And... Some of that might be nostalgia again. It's like Age of Empires 2. But if you look at Age of Empires 2, it's still, to this day, a freaking really popular game just because Microsoft put so much love and effort into essentially remastering that multiple times, in fact. They did, like, uh, I think Age of Empires 2 remastered, then they did Definitive Edition, which is, like, the latest one. And to this day, that's still got, like, championships going on. You can download new mods. It's got, like, uh, expansion sets for new uh, campaigns and stuff. So it just goes to show that even though a game is old and perhaps has dated graphics, if you can update those graphics slightly and maybe add a few uh, benefit of life features, like, I think they added some things just to make it a little bit easier, you know, like uh, quality of life stuff. That's all people need just to relive and like reinvigorate their sort of, you know, addictions and stuff into these old school games. And um, yeah, I think if if someone did this for Road Rash, it would be amazing. 
to have this sort of remastered and uh, you know upgraded, brought into 2024. Oh my god! Also, I forgot some of the best games that definitely I spent a load of time on: Final Fantasy, specifically Final Fantasy VIII and Final Fantasy X. Final Fantasy VII, yes, but not as much. And the reason being is that my first Final Fantasy game that I purchased was VIII. So, as you can imagine, any Final Fantasy player out there, probably the first Final Fantasy game you played is probably going to be your favorite, if not VII. Like, everyone's favorite is VII, but... Usually, everyone's first Final Fantasy game also holds a special place in their heart, and mine was eight, and I loved it, and still love it to this day. I, I still think it's, uh, you know, everyone says that school is a whiny emo kid, and uh, yeah, but you know, I'm okay with that. I, I grew up with school, and uh, I can appreciate him for who he is, so yeah, no no complaints against school. Um, story weird but so cool at the same time enemies amazing i oh, love it this was my favorite weapon that chain is so good um what else oh lovely night nice. might get a bit of money for that hopefully um final fantasy 10 was groundbreaking when it came out because it was the first final fantasy with voice acting so yeah that one was amazing i remember taking a day off school to play that in fact that was that was special 260 oh still haven't got enough maybe we'll just buy a cheaper one i can't i'm too impatient i i want to buy a new bike let's see no 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 so it's this one 6994 oh, but to go from a rat bike to a sports bike is a massive upgrade, I think. Because look, these are only like two, three, four. That one's 5,400. That one could be okay, but I, oh, let's, no, I can't do it. We're so close. We need to, we need to save up for that, uh, for that sports bike. We're going to go again. We are going to, we are going to get this bike. I'm not going to do another uh, map either because I remember the peninsula was super hard and I can't remember the other ones very well. So we're going to try this one once more. Um, yeah. But yeah, if you want to see me play any old school um, PlayStation 1 games, leave a comment, let me know and uh, I'll do it. I'll hop in sometime. Also, sorry that my camera keeps blacking out. It's because I'm um, I'm rendering a uh, video at the moment as well. So my graphics uh, capability is sort of lacking here. Um, it's not Road Rash doing it, don't worry. It's uh, it's actually um, it's just because my graphics card is rendering uh, The Last of Us Part 2, Episode 6. So, yeah. Um other games can I think of that were maybe good I think you go faster if you don't actually fight as well so maybe let's try that let's just try seeing if we can stay sometimes you have to fight though because these guys are too aggressive very aggressive but yeah I remember with my PlayStation it was quite a funny story are oh, you see that's what you get for not fighting um i remember because uh i got it i think 97 and my first game was like crash bandicoot um and look at these buggers they're trying to screw me um Oh no, that's, uh, that's that one ruined. Uh, yeah, it was Christmas when I got it, I believe. And uh, I remember I was a cheeky chap. I went into uh, when my parents were out shopping. Let's go this way. Uh, when my parents were out shopping, 
I used to sneak around the house and have a look-see and uh, I remember in the back of my dad's wardrobe, bottom left-hand side, behind all his suits and uh, shoes, there's a, a big old plastic bag from, I believe, Toys R Us and uh, in that plastic bag happened to be a PlayStation and a lot of games as well. Uh, it came with like, I, I don't know how he managed to get so many games, if they were like a gift or if they were second hand or something, but there was a lot of games there for much more than I expected. Because, you know, when you buy a new console, you usually get like, what, one or two games? I think there must have been like freaking so many in there. There was like at least 15 or so, I believe. And they were like ranging from like Tekken, uh, Ridge Racer, uh, Jack is Back, Tunnel B1. What else did I have in there? Um, there was other games as well. I just can't remember off the top of my head. Um, gosh, that, that's going to drive me crazy there. But yeah, there were others. Oh, this as well. Um, and yeah, I remember one day, like the first time I, I discovered it, I was like, oh man, I was just happy to like see it and yeah it ruined the surprise completely and yeah i did regret that somewhat but um over time like every time they went out i would go in there and i would look and i would just sit down i'd open each one and read the instruction manuals and just like hype myself up but then one time i got super cheeky and uh i actually set it up and i uh i put, put a game in tekken i think I just played a little bit of it and uh yeah, that was that was rather cheeky of me, and I I did regret that. I felt super guilty, like. Um, but yeah, that was that was an amazing Christmas when I got that as well. To be fair, a bit of him. Um, yeah, I just remember sitting there, like Christmas Day or birthday. It might have been as it might have been birthday, you know, um, and just having Crash Bandicoot on and just going through that game for the first time it's like good old nostalgia hit that is uh gta was a controversial one because i remember i really wanted it but it was like it was one of the few games that was actually an 18 rated game and there wasn't hardly any games that were 18 rated back then apart from maybe duke nukem but you know i already had that on pc anyway uh, i think my cousin gave it to me actually uh, on like shareware so yeah but um yeah Duke Nukem and uh I, I really had to convince my mum to let me get that game because you know as a 90s parent back then or eight that's one better than the last time you know you Grand Theft Auto was a really controversial game this was like the first game I believe that um media got hold of and they were like do not buy this for your kids. It will make them violent. It will ruin their childhood and stuff like that. So it was a complete joke. Oh, we can get it. We can get it. Let's do it. Our first suit sport bike. Is this it? Yeah, here we go. Here she is. Look at this. Oh, yeah. Looks good. That 3D animated cutscene there. <sighs> Saucy. Beautiful. Buy it. Yes. Congratulations. Okay, let's give give her a go, shall we? Same track. And we'll see how she is. See if she's any faster. I remember once I, I got the, the Mac Superbike in this game. And holy crap, it's fast. It makes the game a million times harder because you go so fast and your reactions have to be even better. The only thing is that you're so fast that you get ahead of everyone. Oh yeah, I can already feel this is faster. Yeah, this is definitely faster. We're going up 94, 97, 98. Yeah, this is the stuff. Got a nice... Ah, oh, i tell you what was a good game that I haven't mentioned. ESPN Extreme Games. That was a good game. And that was funny because that was one of the games that in every PlayStation magazine, they rated it really poorly. 
They hated that game for some reason, but I absolutely loved it. Again, one I played with friends and my mum, uh, co-op, split screen. And, um, well, this one is fast. Like, it keeps the speed like really high. Like, look, we're still at like 100 miles an hour. Um, and that here. Um, <laughs> uh, and it was it was such a simple game. Again, it's a racing combat one. I think I just had an addiction for racing combat games because you were um, oh no, you could go on your skateboard, rollerblades, luge, or bike. And oh, bastards! I'm getting run down. Um, and yeah, essentially. It was like it was a very difficult game to start with until you mastered the courses you'd need to know exactly where all the gates were and where all the secret passages were and shortcuts and stuff like that and then once you knew that you could master the game and uh yeah i used to love that game played that a lot and um i remember the bike was the easiest because there was a lot of objects on the bike that you could just run over and not fall off Luge was the hardest because you couldn't jump, but you could go under certain obstacles, which helped. But, you know, not being able to jump caused a lot of issues. Um, rollerblades and skateboard were very, uh, I'd say, similar. Like, you know, you're like the middle ground. You can jump, you can crouch, but uh, yeah, definitely bike was the easiest. And uh, I remember I used to love the luge, so just... It was like a, it was a statement for luge. Like if you could win and get all the gates with a luge, you knew you were good at the game then. Um, and they brought out another one called Too Extreme that was like a sequel, but that one was a little bit too extreme to be honest. I could not. Uh, I, I liked the game, uh, but I, I just couldn't master it. I was not good enough, and they they added lots of tricks to it and stuff. Uh, that you needed to do, which I really liked the idea because it was like Cool Borders and SSX kind of style. But um, the thing is, they just made the opponents way too aggressive, way too fast. That it's like if you fell off once, it was so difficult to catch up with them. Um, and yeah, essentially that game was awesome, but they just, oh no, we were in first as well. Look how far we went. Oh no. This is the most annoying bit here when you run, you have to run back and just watch them overtake you. Third, fourth. Okay, fourth. Not too bad, but still. First would have been nice. At least we know the bike is faster. Get out of here. Um, but yeah, this will be the last race that we do, I think. Uh, I'll, I'll play a bit more in the future. If you want to see more Road Rash, just let me know. And uh, we can keep progressing through the game, trying to get first, unlocking some new bikes. Um, but yeah, I, I like uh, Extreme Games. That's another game. If they remastered, I would play that, definitely. Um, get out of here. We might, I don't think we'll be able to do it. We're too close to the end, but we might be able to pull off second. Definitely not first. We're not catching him. Oh, are we? Oh my God, are we going to redeem ourselves here somehow? As long as we don't bugger it up. Watch out for traffic. Oh God, no. And the finish line is there. Oh no. Oh no! Oh no! Give us fourth at least. Oh gosh, that was close. <laughs> oh, that's a shame. We fell off right at the last minute. I knew that was going to happen. I should have taken the outside lane. So I don't think we qualified for that, sadly. I think we'll get some cash. Yeah, 800. So not not too bad. But yeah, didn't didn't qualify. I don't think. Let's have a look. Thank you. 
No, so you need to get top three. But anyway, that is Road Rash. Hope you enjoyed my rum, rumble rambles of everything there and taking you back on a memory lane trip. And uh, yeah, hope you enjoy. Let me know what you want me to play next. And uh, I'll continue playing The Last of Us, but I'll hop into uh, an old classic like this every now and then as well, just to spice things up. Thank you very much. I've been Charles Productions. You've been you. Have a good morning, afternoon, evening, or good night. And I shall see you next time. Peace. Happy Productions.